You're. I'm Robert Sawyer. <laughs> and I'm Mrs. Sawyer. And we are the only black kids in, in the, the class. class. You ready to kick this one off? Is this the day? No. Really? <laughs> really? Well, things have changed over here at Only Kids in the Black. What is it? Only Black Kids in the Class. Damn, maybe I changed the name. No, it's Only Black Kids in the Class. Okay, well, things have changed over here at Only Black Kids in the Class because now we've gone a little bit of the viral. Really? What are you, why are you saying really? You know, you, you look at the Instagram, you know what's going on. I don't call that the viral, though. What do you call it? Eh, more people listening. I'm not going to be so modest because I want to pay homage to all the people that have been tuning in. We went from 6,000 followers to about 26,000 followers oh, wow. in like seven to 10 days. Oh, I didn't know that. I wasn't paying attention to that. Okay. Well, I don't know what you're paying attention I to. I wasn't paying attention to that. And with... All this new visibility is a lot more people telling me that our name is racist. Oh. So shout out to them. Okay. And more importantly, a lot more people are listening to the podcast and we're getting a lot more feedback. And I'm here for it. That's what we're that's what we're here to do. Yeah. I love the engagement. It's been very good. Oh, that's great. Okay. So more people are watching us on YouTube. We're leaving us more comments. Wow. More people are listening on Spotify. More people are joining us on TikTok. More people are, <laughs> way more people are joining us on Instagram. All and right. all this leads to more people are listening to Ask the Black Kids. Oh. A segment that I hope we can do every show. One day, I imagine the entire show will just be Ask the Black Kids. Oh, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. I'm, I'm down for that one. Why, I don't like you that tell one. The, why don't you tell our new listeners what Ask the Black Kids is since we haven't done it in a while? You know, I'm not good at, at doing that stuff, Robert. Talking? I'm not. You're not good at talking on no. a podcast? No. Odd choice to start a podcast if you're not too good at talking. <laughs> I guess we'll we'll take it over to Robert for him to explain it. Take it away, Robert. Sounds Thank good. you, Robert. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is so weird. Ask the Black Kids is our segment where we read user submissions. And you see, we were smaller before, so we got them here, we got them there. We got them, but... Now we're getting them a little more regular basis, and I love it. So today, all our stories are going to be user submitted, some anonymous, some not. One person wrote in what I view a very interesting way. They wrote four different stories at different points of their life. Ooh. And okay. I'll be honest, I have not read any of these. Oh, so we have a surprise. I read the the subject lines on the emails. Okay. Um, but once they got to like the meat of the story, I did not read those. Ooh, okay. Because I wanted to stumble upon my words on mic and camera <laughs> with you. So I like that's a realistic reaction. I, I mean, like it. it's you know, I try. I and try. honey, by the way, that was, that was a great intro to the the section of the podcast. You did it wow. much Thank more elo eloquently than I would have. Thank you. Thank See? you. There you go. When are you going to, you know, start I, I'm jumping still, I'm in still, there? I'm still learning. What are you learning? I'm learning how you, you put things together. I'm making all this up. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, but you're kind of consistent. So you're kind of like the brand. So I got to learn that. Can you be kind of consistent? Yeah, kind of consistent. Okie dokie. <laughs> I'm kind of consistent. So where am I inconsistent? Huh? Where am I inconsistent? I guess when you keep trying to ask me to do it. I consistently, oh, consistently ask you to do, do it. Do How's that inconsistent? It. Well, I just like to use kind of. I now have. This is the reasons why I shouldn't be doing the intro. She said. I now have video evidence of your shenanigans. I have audio. I okay. have video. And guess what? We're getting thousands of people. That, one, that just makes you a shenanigan lover. Thousands of people who are witnessing the abuse There's that no I abuse. have gone through. There's no abuse. Okay. The shenanigans All the I have gone through for years. So you should be used to it by now. Yeah, but now they see it. Okay. I have a goal in mind for this podcast What's that I goal? haven't even told you. Oh, I'm not telling you today. Oh, you're not going to tell me today? I have never shared this with anyone. Okay. But one day we are going to reach a point and I am going to settle the biggest debate in my life. The biggest debate. Don't worry about it. I already know what the debate is. You don't. You, you think yeah. you know. You think you know so much. About I it. know. 
I know. I know you know. <laughs> you know what? Let's not be annoying because I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to get into it. So let's go on. Until I have a big enough jury of my peers. Okay. And when I explain the story, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you finish. Uh-huh. Do it like Kanye. Hey, I'm going to let you finish, but uh-huh. Uh-huh. then I'm going to do my, and then I'm going to tell it. And I already know how the people are going to go. I don't, let's, let's stop talking about it. Yeah. Let's please. Soon enough. Okay. The day is coming. All right. You have been you have been denying me the truth for decades. I've been enough. No, and soon, I have not. Soon enough. Soon enough. <sighs> my ultimate goal with the podcast. Okay. Some other goals I have with the podcast. Now that we're getting in tune with the classmates, some more. Someone said we're doing movie reactions. Yeah, you d- you said that. Oh, that was me. That was you. Uh huh. Hmm. That was you. So where are the movie reactions? I don't know. You tell me. When are you? Are you committing to a movie? It's, it's on camera. I, I've already committed. Are you committing? Was, you can you can play back the tape. I re, I committed earlier. You did because okay. I know the movie that I think we should start with. Okay. Like I told you, but we're doing this. You know, it's a group project. Oh wow, we should have something called group project. No, we shouldn't. I hated group projects in school. Yeah. Because there's always someone that didn't do shit. Always. And you had to pull their weight. And they kind of got like, yeah, I, I didn't really like that. And then the teacher's like, oh, my God, you guys did so great. And this fucker didn't do shit the whole time. Correct. Ugh. That's normally how group stuff works. All right. Well, we'll figure out a better name for it. Movie reactions. Can we? We said by the end of March and we are not in March anymore. So. Bye bye. Are we are we committing? Well, April is my birthday month. So that would be. That would be nice. A movie. Sure. Popcorn in a movie with your lover and mm. a couple thousand of your of your classmates. I don't really need the popcorn, but you love the popcorn, so. What do you what do you want? What do you want for the for the movie so we can make it happen? <laughs> I, candy, I know that. I already got the candy. Try some candy. Plus I'm the, I'm all the sugar you need. <laughs> what else? What do you need? Mm-mm. Probably used to spice. use like nachos. Wow, that was a long time ago. I did. Nachos yeah. are good. Now you make me want nachos. You want me to get, okay, we're going to have nachos. I'll have the popcorn. We're going to have the candy. And you know what I will do? Here, here's our, I'm, I'm going on record. All okay. this is on record. Okay. 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 It's not just you and me anymore where you can pull the shenanigans and say, I didn't say that. Even though it's on, it's on camera now. Yes, Robert. I'm going on record. I will go get you Fountain Sprite. <gasps> and I will bring it back here with extremely light ice so that it's not all watered down because okay. y'all know okay they're sprite out the can that's cool okay. but sprite out the fountain it's different it does i will go get you and i'm so upset that they took the sprite out the movie theater now i think that's the reason why i haven't gone back babe in all honesty that would be weird i know but i don't like i i just don't like what is that starry what i don't know what that is what? starry the pepsi version of the sprite i don't i don't like that Look, the point is, we're watching the movie with the classmates. I hear you. And I'm telling you, I will get you the fountain soda Sprite. Okay. All right. So we're doing this. I'm down. You saw you saw the pound of approval. It's happening. But please, feel free to tell us what movie you want us to watch. So you can hear us run our mouths. And she will run her mouth. You will get lots and lots of Mrs. Sawyer commentary. On whatever movie you want. So if you've ever if you've ever just wanted to hear an overly judgmental, bougie take on something, send us your suggestion. So dramatic. Anything else we should get into before we read all these ask no, the black No, I'm kids? excited. I want to hear what people have want to ask about. Let's go. Again, I have not read any of these. And also, I would like to just make a disclaimer. Usually we're reading stories from internet strangers. So... We just say it how it is. Mm-hmm. It is never our intention to berate, to be mean. Oh, no. We're not going to be jerks. If you are the asshole in these stories, we're going to tell you. For sure. We're not going to just be like, oh, no. We don't For know. sure. We're going to say what we think. For sure. That's why you're here. That's why you send it. We're not here to just agree with you. Correct. Like some people expect you to always agree with them. We're not here to just agree with you. But we will do it with compassion. That's fair. I can commit to that. Unless it's a toxic confession. If it's a toxic confession, <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, you're getting full force. Oh, boy. Judgment. Oh, it's... Judgment and teehees. All right, let's. 
if you're a bad human, you're gonna we're get told going to you're a bad you. human. Absolutely. So I hope there's no bad human. Here we go with our first one. Mm-hmm. This one comes from Anonymous. Okay. Am I an asshole? My fiance and I were living together and she has a 23-year-old daughter and a 21-year-old son that lives with her. We've had problems in our relationship due to her children doing what they want to do in the house. Mm. The daughter is dating a drug dealer oh. and the son gets ran by every girl he comes close with. Oh my. She also says our relationship revolves around sex and wants to cut down on that. But what? the son lets his girlfriend sleeps in his room together with her, not batting an eye. Oh no. She wants to be independent and says she wants to do what she wants because it's her choice and I should be okay as long as I know I'm with her. No one has any discipline or ethics. I can't make any decisions in the house at all without them all getting mad at me. Am I the asshole? No. So I have some some clarifying questions here. That I will not be able to answer. No, but in in the beginning, because I was so enthralled in, in like this, the the play by play that I don't remember all the history of the the beginning of it. Let's go. Did, did they said they moved in with him? It does not say that. My fiance and I were living together. Oh, okay. and she has a twenty three year old daughter and okay. a twenty one year old son that lives with her. It does not say whose house it was. Okay. I am going to okay. guess. I could be totally wrong. We do not know. Uh-huh. Please forgive me if I'm wrong. I'm going to guess he moved in with her. Okay. Only because I don't know that the 23-year-old and the 21-year-old would then come into his house. I don't know. It's not what I typically see. Right. But we don't know. Right. Okay. So if we're wrong, please okay. don't murder us in the comments. We don't know. Okay. Well, I mean, no, I don't think they're an asshole, but I think that that's just a very, um, it's a little bit of a toxic relationship. How so? Um, I think like living with someone and what you call your home is a place where you have like peace and there's like, you know, you have, that's your, that's like your, that's your spot kind of thing Mm -hmm. and not being able to articulate how you're feeling or things that bother you or, or you feel like are important heard. I think that that's, that's a terrible way to be all the time like that's that's your home Mm -hmm. and so if someone's feeling that way i feel that that's not that's not conducive for happiness so i i kind of feel like like just right off the bat whether or not they agree disagree or if it's about you know like who's sleeping over drug dealers and all that stuff just the fact that you're not able to express how you feel that's that's a terrible situation to me yeah I mean, yeah. you know, I know there's multiple sides to the story and we're only hearing, you know, the person is asking us the question side. Like maybe I don't know if they're saying the things the way they should be saying or if they're being, you know, disrespectful or abusive. But regardless, if that if that's what it is, you should be able to express how you feel. Yeah. At a minimum. Like like to me, that's like number one. <laughs> I would not want to. I I would. I would advocate not living with that person until you're able to do that. I agree with you. I'm going to point out a few things. Okay. Email says she wants to be independent and says she wants to do what she wants because it's her choice and I should be okay as long as I know I'm with her. This sounds like someone who is not ready for a relationship. Mm -hmm. I am independent in my relationship. My wife is independent in in her marriage with me. But we function as a unit. We Absolutely. function as a union. Yeah. It is not that I have to check in with her. It is not that she has to check in with me. I do check in with her because I want to check in with her. Um, I would even say I check in with you more than you check in with me because I like to communicate. <laughs> um, but that's 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 a healthy function of our relationship. I And I'm guessing that you, Anonymous moved in with your girlfriend. And the reason I'm guessing that is because of your feeling that you cannot say anything to her children. Mm -hmm. Her children are adults, but they are most likely following the patterns of behavior that has been allowed throughout their lives. I could see that. What I would tell the OP is you're making inaccurate comparisons. And what I mean by that is when you say she says 
that our relationship revolves around sex and she wants to cut down on that. But her son gets to sleep with his girlfriend. Well, you're comparing yourself to her child. And though he is an adult, it's her child. She probably looks at him as a child. Should the girlfriend be allowed to sleep in the house? That's really up to the rules of your house. I can't say I wouldn't do it, but it's really up to the rules of your house. And it sounds like you're, you're, there's like a false equivalency of, well, how come we can't have sex, but he can? Yeah. And, and I'm going to tell you something I've learned from, from listening to more men in therapy. Um, especially so I have some men that come in and they're very red pill, uh, which is weird. Like, why do you come to, th- oh, whatever, I won't get into that. But, um, the expectation of what a man should be and should do in a relationship, I think is ever evolving. And I, I look at it, I kind of liken it to this middle child situation of, mm. of men in this generation. What I mean by that is if you're in your thirties or forties, if you're a millennial, your father and your grandfather's way of being a man is very different from the expectations we would have from your son and your grandchildren. So what you were taught to be a man, don't express feelings, men don't cry, men are supposed to just shut up and take it. Um, If you have 50 girlfriends, that's totally fine. And what your children, what these next generation, I'm gonna say generation alpha, more so than Generation Z, but especially Generation Alpha, that's they're going to be under, uh, they're definitely under 18. They're under like 15 um, right now. What they are learning is that it's okay to cry and it's okay to express your feelings. And it's a very different thing. So if you're a man that's a millennial, like I, I, I am the oldest millennial possible. So I don't, I, don't, I don't claim millennial. They put it on me. But as as the elder statesman of millennials, what you were taught as a man, what we were taught as a man, well, remember our dads and our granddads were in the 60s, 70s, uh, some of you 80s, and it's just a very different expectation. So I say all of that to say you have to define what is acceptable for you. You have to define your boundaries and then never expect another person to follow your boundaries. These days I see people online and they're using, they're weaponizing boundaries. Like, oh, well, it's my boundary. You're not allowed to wear denim. And if you wear denim, then we can't be together. That's bullshit. That's not a boundary. Your your boundary can't control another person. Right. So if your boundary is you don't want to be in a relationship where they allow their adult children to sleep, well, have sex in the house, that's fine for your boundary. That doesn't mean she has to change. Right. That means you have to change. Correct. So why are you in a relationship where you are so disempowered? What are you getting from the relationship that makes it tolerable for you to feel as disenfranchised as it sounds like you feel? Yes. Um, and the whole thing about she's independent and you should just be happy that she's with you. Like, Well, I, I think it's someone who... That sounds like a woman who is saying she doesn't want to be anchored down. She wants to do what she wants to do. She's going out. She's doing this. But I'm with you. I'm not cheating. So why are you mad? That's what it sounds like. Again, you know what I realized? Let's tell our new guest. I am a licensed mental health counselor. Mm -hmm. So when I speak, I'm speaking from the place of talking with, at this point, thousands of people. I've been doing this for a decade and a half. So I have heard so many stories. It's not that I've experienced it all, but I've now been the therapist for it. And I've heard so many conglomerations. I don't even know the word. So many, it's conglomerate, what? it's like a business. So many configurations of relationships. So a lot of this is just pulling from my experience. I don't know that he moved in with her. Right. But typically what I see is that. I've had lots of cases like this. Lots yeah. of them. I think there's also um, a lack of some communication there. There's a lack of communication about the expectations. Right, right. And it sounds like you aren't happy. She's saying our relationship revolves around sex and she wants to cut down on it. I am guessing you don't want to cut down on it. Yeah. Um, there's, there's, there's There's a disconnect. So you're not an asshole. You are not the asshole. But I'm not going to say she's the asshole either. Right. It sounds like you're both ill prepared for the communication aspect of the relationship. Correct. And so that's where I would tell you it has to work. As always, I'm going to recommend couples counseling. Um, I would agree with that. But it also sounds like a lot of personal growth for both of you. Yes. 
because there's something, you know, why am I in a relationship? Why is she in a relationship? Yeah, there's some opportunity. She doesn't want to. I think I think there's some opportunity there. Just how like sex is being weaponized. Like, you know, like I, that's all our relationship is. It's too much of it. It's like, wait, huh? Like, you know, it's, is it just really like a function? Of, and how long have they been together? Right. Like, is it just a function that, oh, we just have sex? Or is it like an actual mutual emotional experience? You know what I mean? Like, I kind of feel like it's just like a. But we, that's that's the thing. We don't know. No, no, no. We don't I don't know. Read too so I'm much just saying. It. But just the way that 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 it's written, right? Is that that to me is part of that therapy session that yeah. would happen? That communication part. Yeah. To me, that's a factor that needs to be discussed because just the way that it's thrown out there is just not healthy for a relationship to be happy or to grow. And let's just add in. I am a therapist. I'm not your therapist. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Everything that we discuss in this show is continue is considered edutainment. Edutainment. Uh, I like it that is one. educational. It is entertainment. If you are in need of real mental health services, please seek please your seek mental health professional. Yes. Do not come back and say, but the guy on the podcast. Nope. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Y'all not going to get me. So this is my opinion. Yeah, I am not acting in the capacity of your therapist, and I probably need to say that more often because yes, you we probably we should probably we say that the all the time. We need the, when we are on that stand, <laughs> when we are on that stand. But you told uh, me, nope, no, no, I mean, no, I never no, said no. Said I'm not your therapist, right? Social media is not therapy. YouTube's not therapy. TikTok's not therapy. Email not there. Okay, I'm yeah, done. all right. Oh, that's, so that was kind of a real one. That was a real one. And it, was, I mean, it was a shorter email, so I was thinking. Yeah. Oh. So, I mean, I, I think that the end of that to me is, no, they're not an asshole, but I, I, I think if, if you're really interested in um, being in that relationship, there's just some work to be done. That's just, I mean, all relationships I'm take work. I'm surprised that you didn't tell them break up. No, I don't know. I feel know like all, most stories we read, I don't it's know break all up. The, I don't know all the factors to say break up. Just off of that, I can't say break up. I just think... I don't know. The living arrangements are are, are, are that great. And I'm not going to say more. break up. I'm going to say commit. Yeah. Meaning y'all got to figure out this thing. And usually that's either going to take you a shitload of time or you get that third party and they are guiding you in building upon your strengths, adapting and accepting your differences and, and building that stronger union. Agreed. All righty. Right. Our first of many. First, check. we're doing an entire episode. So this one, I got, I have to go to this one next. Okay. It's because this person put microaggressions and double standards. So if you've ever listened to this podcast or this is your first time, my favorite subjects are microaggressions and entitled people because it's what I deal with the most in my life. Would you care to define microaggression? You want me to? I don't. I'm trying things to look, well. look. It's not the Robert show. No, I'm. Okay? But I'm. I, I told you my capacity is like an editor. Commenter. You don't edit. I, I, I like comment on wait, wait, things. What, what I make season? things better. Editor, commenter, commenter, commenter. I get thousands of comments online. Commenter. I'm popping. Yeah, I can give you comments. These too. comments said Zaddy is doing his. Oh thing. my goodness! I have to go see these comments about the Zaddy nonsense. You knew, look. You knew it was gonna happen. You knew it was gonna happen. Oh boy! You know, you know who you married. <laughs> you know who you married. I Y'all stop blowing up his head, please. It's not, it's not blowing up my head. I, <laughs> like, the people. I'm not saying this. It's not me. Oh boy! It's not me. Here we go. We have we have a reel that got like a 1.5 million. So shout out to us, and really shout out to y'all because it's not like we can make it do that. Is it my fault that my reading voice? Is so seductive. No. Nope. Is it my fault that the ladies love chocolate? Nope. What can I do? A bald head. Nope. A smooth voice. An incredible credit score. And a loving relationship with a woman. Mm-hmm. This isn't arrogance. This is I'm just relaying what the people said. I'm not disagreeing. Okay, thank you. That's just a great return it would on my the, investment. Yeah, so exactly. I'm, I'm all good for exactly. it. Exactly. What she said, I'm independent, but you should be happy that I'm with you. See? <laughs> See? <laughs> all right, let's get into it. You got to explain what a microaggression is. A microaggression is that, I'm not, I don't know the real definition. A microaggression uh -huh. is that bullshit that people do to you on a regular basis. But it's so small that if you respond, it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. 
I didn't mean it like that. Why are you upset? And they're bullshitting you because they did mean it like that. Yeah, they, they did. they always do it. They did. They always do it. They normally do. It's usually Susan. It's usually Sarah. It's usually lots of them. Yeah. I'm getting mad just thinking about it. You getting mad? Yeah. Okay. Microaggressions are often gendered, racialized, uh, economic status. <sighs> They're doing it based on something. It's dicks. Okay. Oh I'm riled up now. Microaggressions and double standards. Hi, new subscriber. I am African American and I really identified with Mrs. Sawyer about the different treatment with straight hair over curly hair. Okay. Okay, that was a previous yes, previous that's episode. A, that's we had. A fo- Shout that's out a to you for the callback. Woo-hoo. All right. I used to work with all white and Latino co-workers who believe they are white. The comments could be unnerving, like, you should always wear your hair like this, mm. or you look like a different person, or mm-hmm. your hair looks more professional when I wear or wore it straight over curly. To be fair, I have three C, four A curls that can look different from day to day, especially freshly washed versus day three hair. Yep. I just don't feel like my straight hair morphs me into a new person. Then, to top it off, men treat me differently as well. They open the doors for me, speak to me more often, compliment my appearance, etc. What do you think? Thanks, Anonymous. Yeah. I'm with her. And you know, I'm going to throw in a new one because I've never had braids before and now I have braids. Show it off, show it off. Woohoo! I got braids now. First time ever in my whole life. Um, and, and I could totally relate to that. It's just different. And even I saw I saw some people today, you know, went to the gym and I hadn't seen this since I got the braids. And they're like, oh, you changed your hair. It's the, oh, you, you, you changed your hair. Like that was so, it. So is that a microaggression? Oh, for sure. But you see how you can always play on it. For sure. No, I was just stating a fact. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so I was like, yeah. So what is the suggestion? You're not allowed to no, change your hair? No, embrace it. Do whatever you feel that you feel like we're doing with your hair. Because I'll tell you, sometimes my hair, I can wash it, and it's a beautiful curl. Sometimes it's a beautiful puff. I live in Miami. It's a lot of humidity. And I've just learned to embrace whatever. The, she's going to do what she wants to do. She's her own being. So I say embrace it. Do what you feel when you walk out the door. Make sure your hair is how you want it. And bite those who don't. That's what I would recommend. As a supporter of natural curly-haired women, um, I have watched a lot of Bianca Renee. <laughs> Shout out Bianca Renee. Shout out Bianca Renee. I've watched a lot. Uh-huh. Um, I you know I used to be, I used to be a a four C myself <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> So back, I, back I know a little days. bit about the letters. Uh, not, back I don't in really the know them. Back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. Back in the days when I had <laughs> hair and I went to the barber. Till some Ew. days, I wish I had my fro again. As a supporter of, of the curly haired community, I speaking to the men treating you differently, I do think most men in this country are brainwashed by the European beauty standards. Probably most people. Hmm. You can say that Hmm. from time to time for me, my wife does straighten her hair and I do note that you straighten your hair, but I always, I know when you, I know when you change your hair, period. Yes. you Do do. you feel I'm giving you more compliments when you straighten your hair? Not at all. Not at all. Like, you know, like, like people will say, Oh, I bet Robert loves it like that. And I was like, Robert loves me regardless if if I didn't have hair. You Um, You don't think there's a difference of when your hair is straight, when your hair is curly between you and me? Yeah. No. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I don't think so, but that could be a, an unconscious bias. I could no, have. I don't think so at all. Um, no. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah, I mean, regardless what your hair is, I love you and our Afro-Caribbean <laughs> and a Dominican love. No, uh, I knew I was waiting for it. <laughs> Just no Dominican love. And if you want to know what that means, go go back and watch it. Go watch a few episodes back. <laughs> Yeah, um, I would just support that person. Uh, I would just tell that person to. But what do you think about the the part where she's getting more attention, more compliments, more kindness? That kind of makes you feel like, oh, so I'm not shit as I am. I got to go look so a I, certain way. I try to be. I try to really center myself in being positive and really trying to move forward from from like from the negativity. And so I think there's a there's a there's a place where you could think that way. But I'm going to say, 
do you and those people who appreciate who you are, then they have like passed the test to be in your, be a part of, of, of your happiness and your being. Mm. And all those people who can't, then they just not for you and that's okay. Yeah. And they can go do their thing. So I really try to, to look at, okay, well, what is this for me? Like them not liking your hair or them treating you any different is, is nothing to do with you. You can't control that. And I want to throw another scenario. Let's say, I don't know, but let's say she's dating or she's uh-huh. trying to, she's looking for a relationship uh-huh. and the men she's attracted to treat her better or, or she tends to get more attention and asked on dates more when she has her hair straight. How does she maneuver that? To me, that's a litmus test because that means then for you to get the treated the way you want to tr- be treated, you have to be fake. You gotta, you well, gotta. It's not fake. Else. You're not fake when no, you straighten no, no, no. your hair. No, that but is that you. That is an extra step. If that's not what she wants to do, if she's saying that it, if for her to be treated the way she wants to be treated is contingent on her straightening her hair, then that's not really her. Who taught you how to say contingent? <laughs> Don't start. <laughs> so that to me is you. You then would always have to do something to receive the way you want to be felt. Like to be felt. No, you got time for that. Yeah. No, 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 no. You just have an, and if, and if, and then, you know, some people may feel, well. So then, so, but, but I, I feel kind of stuck because I want to tell her, wear your hair the, however the hell you want to wear your wear hair. Wear your hair however but the hell let's say, you want. But let's say she has her hair straightened. Uh-huh. She's going out. Uh-huh. She meets, you know, a fly young Thundercat. She exchanges her number. Uh-huh. Then she goes to the date. She's four seat up. Yep. And he's like, oh, this isn't, I'm getting catfished. Oh. Then, ah, oh, that wasn't one for you. Enjoy a great dinner and move on. That's it. All righty. Keeping it real. Yes. Let's keep it moving. Wear your hair the way you want, and you wear it proudly however the way you want. Period. That's it. In our next story, hashtag microaggressions. Oh. What up, though? Do you know, do you know, so you, you got to be from the D when you say it like that. <laughs> so what up, though? Hashtag microaggressions. What up, though? I'm a city girl, girl born in a big city, not to be confused with a girl who's outside and moved to a very small town in southern Arizona for work. They were not used to a lot of black women as the town was mostly Mexican. For years, I traveled home to get my hair done, sew-ins, as I didn't trust anyone in the area. I can feel you on that. Mm-hmm. I eventually found someone to do my hair a few hours away. I took my sewing out in preparation to try the new girl and wore my natural hair for the very first time. My boss, who was a white woman, approached me from behind and touched my poofy ponytail oh, without no. asking and replied, oh, no. it's soft like cotton. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Bitch. Nope. And why cotton? Nope. Like, that's like, And why nope. cotton? Oh, no. I was so caught off guard and shocked that the phrase came out of her mouth. I think I froze. I beat myself up all the time for not reporting her. I was scared of retaliation and knew she would find out it was me because it was so specific. Ugh. Well, you know. This that bullshit. That is that bullshit. Another one with hair? Yeah. Think about it. Hair? I'm telling like people really don't understand what it is. And don't understand what it is to be in, in spaces where there's not representation already. And then that is your thing that is like looked at differently. Like one of the many, but is a tangible thing. Mm-hmm. First of all, somebody touched my hair. That Why? That That's inappropriate. Why? At a minimum, that's inappropriate. And that to me is grounds for HR, all kinds of stuff. Why you are you touching me? You put your hands me? on me at all. So I already would have been already hot. That's it. Then it feels like cotton. Oh, no, 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 no. What you mean, cotton? Yeah. How come yeah. it didn't feel like a cloud? So, you know, and I and I can understand. Why do you know what it feels like? <laughs> Why are you touching me? Yes. And I and I understand that. And I think that I think that Pause. I think that certain people prey on certain people, right? Like it sounds like this for sure. This poster is like an, probably a nice person or, or more to themselves and it's not going to be outspoken. And so that person, the boss just really had the audacity that she can go on because of her position to go in and, and be like, what? But do they not know yet? That, that, see, do they not know nothing? Why are you like, what? Imagine I walked into the office. 
damn, Karen. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Right. Because, you know. It's a wrap. As, as quiet as it's, it's a kept, wrap. there's a lot of people that wear weaves that are not, like, that are so in that don't have naturally uh, 4C hair. That this just never why you, discussed why you, that. Why you, why you, why you, just say what you want to say. Oh, there's a lot of white women that wear weave and nobody's asking about their tracks. Don't, 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 you don't, you I listen. see it all the time. Hey, hey, you don't ever got to sense yourself well, I just, on only black kids in the class. Agreed. But I'll do it when I edit later on. <laughs> no, you never do. I never do. You never do. <laughs> you never do. You never do. But what I'm saying is, back to the, the, the poster before, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, wear your hair. And, and like, if you want to wear weave, you don't want to wear weave, that's your choice. Don't feel any way bad about it. But I am really upset that someone touched her hair. And I hope that you just take that. Don't beat yourself up about it. Yeah, that's what Learn I feel bad from about. It. I feel Learn bad. Learn from it that you never want to feel that way again. And if you're ever put in that position or someone does that to you, have the strength enough to be vocal about it. That like that's that's really I the part that bothers me the, the most is that you felt bad like you still think about it so it's that's clearly there say. like tr- it was traumatic enough for you to you you remember it and you think about it and you didn't do anything act on it but give yourself some grace right learn from that grow from that mm-hmm. and get like next okay come at me again next time touch my hair again we gonna have some problems. What would you do if someone touched your hair at work? Oh, if I'm at work, I'm reporting it. I'm writing all kind of letters. I'm going to HR. That's inappropriate. That's that's outside of like personal space you remember, boundaries. You remember everything. the lady in the in the Victoria's Secret, who the black lady was filming the white lady, and the white lady's like attacking her, and he's like, "You're filming me." I would yes. hit, I would hit one of those. You're touching my hair. Oh. Yeah. I would I would have a freak out. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness, I'd freak out so much. No, I work it absolutely, and then for a statement like that, it feels like cotton. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that, that would be totally. <laughs> whew. That's that's inappropriate. Disrespectful at all. That's a bad human. Ooh. Yes. In completely. our next story. This letter. I'm just going to assume this one's anonymous as well. If y'all want to be anonymous, just say so. Okay. Am I the asshole because I unfriended my homegirl because I found out she was fucking my ex. Oh. And when I asked her about it, she lied. See? I don't care about him, but he was just calling me a week before, LOL. I end saved his number, so I kind of knew by heart. So one day, I was helping her, so stuff in her room now on the dresser. Her phone was sitting face up, and the number ran past. She looks startled, picks up the phone, and walks out the room, then comes back. I say nothing. I waited a minute. Then I asked her for her phone, because at the moment, mine was broke. I go to my Instagram. And go to his inboxes because he just sent me his number. I go to her call log and compare the numbers. Yes, it's the number. Oh, boy. So now I go through the text messages. Now my oh, homegirl, she sells food. So I really thought it was about selling food. But nope. It was like, can I see you tonight? Oh. What is your plans? So am I an asshole because I don't want to affiliate with none of them no more? Nope. Girl. Nope. You're Bye. the asshole. You're not the asshole. Listen, listen, listen. She's trifling. Yeah. And he ain't shit. Probably yeah. why. Probably why. Mm-hmm. He's your ex. Yeah. We just did a story about this yeah. not too long ago. And my and the guy was asking, you know, he dated this girl for 10 years. And in less than a year, his best friend wanted to date her. You're not an asshole. No. She can date who she wants to date. He can date who he wants to date. You can't control that. No. He's your you ex. Gotta, you gotta He's going to date again. You don't need that kind of you don't need that kind of vibes in your life. Move but on. As from that. your friend. As your friend. I, me personally, I would just never do it. But I understand people, you know, it happens. You don't know whatever. Things happen. But as your friend, that she hid it from you. Yeah. That that's she didn't have the decency to say, hey, this is kind of happening. Yeah. Um, not to get your permission, because again, you can't give no, permission. No. But woman to woman. Right. She should have been talking to you. So like the, the, to me, like friends are relationships, right? And so I can't have a friend that can't be open and honest with me because I'm gonna be open and honest with them. Like in order to be in my small circle of friendship, 
It has to be free space to say what we need to say, have difficult conversations, talk about things that are positive, that are negative, whatever it takes. Like that's what a friend is. That's the definition of friend to me. And you're not a friend if you're sneaking around you because she knows it's not right. Right. And so then like, what are we going to talk about? Because then I don't trust you for anything. So then how do so we have a relationship? So why are we friends? So what, where do you have a relationship on? You are not the asshole. Not at all. I will go no. so far to say your friend is the asshole. Yeah. And him. He going to do what he going to do. A dog going to do what it's going to do. You know, why do we always, why do we call men dogs? Men ain't shit. Men are dogs. Dogs are the most loyal. So what are we saying? Men yeah, but we're talking about like. From a perspective, a dog will, like, you know, go with this dog and then go down the street and go with another dog. I think that's the reason why. They're still loyal. Yeah, to the owner, but not to what's out in the street. Not to the strange. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So, I mean, that's just that's just their nature. And I'm not saying necessarily all men are dogs, but I'm just saying maybe this one is. <laughs> he ain't shit. No, he's not shit. But he your definitely friend, worth it. Your friend. She ain't shit either. Is the super not shit one. She ain't shit either. That's not your friend. That's the real that's the real definition. She's not your friend. You know what she is? A bad human. Bad human. Mm-hmm. A bad mm-hmm. human. Mm-hmm. That's what she is. And the one I'm looking forward to reading now. The title of the email, Four Stories That Stick With Me. Like when I saw that title, I was like, Four stories? Tell me more. Hi. Okay. Love y'all's content. I'm sharing four stories from the last seven years that have stuck with me. I wrote them from the position of when they happened. LOL. Enjoy. Okay. All right. So we've got four stories from this person's life written from when they happened. Story number one. Am I the asshole for not reaching out to my ex-friend when her nephew got hit by a car? God damn. Oh, wow. (laughs) We're not starting off good. Oh my goodness. Remember, I read the first part. I have not read these. Whoa. Whoa. Did she hit him with the. Oh, no, no. Let's find out. Let's find out. My friend and I haven't spoken in over a year after a particularly bad vacation together. For my 25th birthday, I took a two week trip to Hawaii. It was my chance to decompress and also get my groove back. I was out there for nine days by myself before my friend joined me. And during that time, I had made a couple friends of the male persuasion. Mm. For three days, we woke up together, spent the whole day exploring the island and would come back to the hotel. The day before we were to leave, I wanted to catch up with one of the guys. Oh, see, I misread. My bad. I wanted to catch up with one of the guys I met that had gotten closer to just for a few hours. My friend didn't say anything, but I could tell she was annoyed. And a couple days later, we left. Me and my friend are part of a larger friend group, and I heard from one of the girls that my friend was mad at me because she feels like I put men before our friendship. Oh. I found that reaction so odd because it didn't seem like it had merit, and my friend never brought it up to me. I decided to let it breathe, and if my friend wanted to reach out, she would. She never did, and shortly after, it felt like I was being snubbed by the whole friend group, and they had taken a side that wasn't mine. Oh, no. They took friend trips, hosted parties, and went to weddings without inviting me. Ooh. Damn. After several months, I reached out to my friend about sending some of the pictures we took in Hawaii and never heard back. One of the girls in the friend group reached out to tell me that my friend and the other girls in the group were appalled at me for reaching out to her about pictures, but not about her nephew who had hidden... What? But not about her nephew who had been hit by a car. I didn't know, and no one had told me that he had been hit, especially not my friend who had not been talking to me for months. Oh, no. She did post about it on social media, but I had, per page, I had her page muted and had not seen the updates. I hope her nephew recovers well, but I honestly don't give a fuck if they're mad at me about this. It's been painful to lose a whole friend group, but I personally feel like they are tripping. Am I the asshole? Oh, wow. That's a delicate one. Mm -hmm. It's not that delicate. She's not the asshole, though. It's not that delicate. She's not that asshole. She's not the asshole, though. She's not the asshole. She's not the asshole at all. But. I got it from here, sis. I'll let you go ahead. All right. Let's have this girl talk. I'll be the editor on this one. Listen, the only mistake you are making is you keep referring to these people as friends. These people aren't your friends. You do not 
know these people as friends. You might know them as acquaintances. You might know them as people you cool with. How the fuck are you going to get mad at me for not reaching out about some shit I didn't know about? Mm Mm-hmm. I don't care if you put it on social media. When real shit happens, what do we do? We text and we call. Yep. That's dumb as shit. Yes. You're not the asshole. And you know what? I'm not even going to say the friend's the asshole. I am going to say if she was upset, she should have spoken to you. I agree. But that's what I would expect a friend to do. And that's not your friend. Right. I think the whole the whole group. I mean, I know it's probably painful. Right, because yeah. she had like yeah. she had a, a a feeling that these were her friends, and that is painful. And and this is coming from so I I had a very similar uh, a situation I can understand to be similar to that. It was a lot more um, it was a lot more in- intense, but similar situations happen, and I discovered that people I thought were my friends were not my friends, and that's that's sometimes a very bitter pill to swallow um but it's for the best right um because you don't want to be you don't know what else could happen from that and so the fact that the friends didn't tell you about what happened again why are we calling them friends well the rest of the group didn't tell you about what happened tells me clearly these are not people that you should be a a part of like you shouldn't be like around them it sounds like a blessing in disguise yeah and you and may it, not it feel that hurt. way now, and you may feel hurt, but later on you'll recognize that that is. Well, that's why I'm so excited about this one, because we don't know when this one was, and there are four more stories. That's true. Or three more stories. Well, I just hope, like, you know, I mean, I know it's rough, and, and you in a, in a previous episode we, we talked about, like, you know, times pass, and this might be a bad time, but it will pass. And I and hopefully later on you can reflect that it was for the best, because those are, those are not your friends. Not your friends. Isn't it interesting that we can say in previous episodes now? Yeah, but that those are not your friends. Friends don't act that way. No. And I kind of feel like there's someone there that's torn that like talked to her. To the person her. that reached out? Yeah, like just tell her the kind of like thing, right? And I think sometimes friend groups, friend groups are super dynamic, right? Because there's always a leader, right? And then there's an like a person who's You're talking about the hierarchy. Yes. In, in a friend group. Right. Mm-hmm. And the person who's reaching out to her. And I don't know, this is all like just me putting together the pieces. It's probably might be somebody who really doesn't agree with the rest of the group, but it's not brave enough to speak against it. Cause that happens inside of groups of friends. I don't want to blow this up. Right. I believe it happens with men. I do. Yes. I do. The reason why I bring that up is because that's not what I see on TikTok. Oh, well, TikTok, on TikTok is TikTok? completely skewed. Yeah, of course. For sure. For sure. I know. That's skewed. I know. I know. But when when they, when they them girls take the Miami trips, Miami yeah. trips are where friendships go to die. Yeah. Yeah. They are besties. That's my sis. That's my twin. Where yeah. have you been? Yeah. And by the time they leave Miami, that bitch. Yeah. She ain't shit. Can't stand her. Broke ass. Ain't never liked her. Yeah. Why why you ain't bring no money on the trip? Yes, yes. Who leaves the country with only $130? Yeah, Just all saying. of those things. Just saying. So let's keep it moving. Yes, go to the next Same story. poster. Story number two. Am I the asshole for letting my ex best friend be slut shamed? Hold on now. You can't how many how many ex friends you got? Okay. Mm, you can go through some. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's true. Now, before we begin, I do not condone shaming women for sexual liberation, but sometimes it's hard to defend the actions of women to men. I, 20-year-old woman, and my friend, a 19-year-old woman, have been friends since high school. We even went as far as to go to two colleges in the same town to continue our friendship. Hmm. During the summer, my friend and I found out we both had a propensity for shoplifting and started shoplifting together. Oh, no. We ran it up for the whole summer and then got busted a week before we went back to school. Oh, no. We were so scared of our parents' reactions, but since both of our parents work in law, we were able to not get into too much trouble, just some community service. But it became very clear that her mom did not like me and thought I was a bad influence. Mm. That was fine because my mom felt the same way about her. (laughs) A week later, we're back on campus, and we continue to hang out and be friends without the pressure of parental disapproval. 
I decided to no longer shoplift because having a criminal record wasn't worth a pair of $50 sunglasses. My friend, however, continues to shoplift on her own. This year, my boyfriend was living with his friends near my friend's school, so naturally she would come over a lot to hang out when I was there. Now, my boyfriend is an attractive guy, and he has attractive friends, but hmm. they are all trash. <laughs> I would never recommend any of my friends date them because I hear how they talk about women. They uh -huh. just want to smash. That's it. At a party, my friend was drunk and came on to one of my boyfriend's friends, oh boy. friend number one. When I heard about it, I thought the exchange was pretty harmless. Just some flirting and kissing. But then my friend decided to start dating, hooking up, uh -huh. with my boyfriend's roommate, friend mm. number two. Mm. I like to leave grown folks to be grown, but I told her to not get attached. She did not listen, and shortly after, he replaced her with some girl he also didn't really like that much. Of course. Before the transition to the new girl happened completely, we all were out one night partying. We were about eight people deep in a five-seat car smoking when the cops rolled up. Essentially, everyone got a possession charge that night. A my few gosh. days later, my friend told me that she didn't want to hang out with me anymore because I was a bad influence and, cause, oh. <laughs> and oh. caused her to get a charge even though she didn't smoke. Okay. My friend abruptly stopped coming to apartment and stopped talking to friend number two after everything happened. It was a few months later when I overheard my boyfriend's friend talking about how they, would, they should lay out a tarp on the floor and take turns with her. Because she had hooked up with yet another friend of my boyfriend's, friend number three. Oh, my. At this point, we hadn't spoken in weeks. And I was surprised to find out she was even still talking to anyone from the group. It made me sad to hear them talk about her that way because I remember how close we used to be. And she really is a good person. But I said nothing. So am I the asshole? No. No, you're not the asshole. No. Mm -mm. Nope. Some lessons have to be learned on their own. And if that's what the friend wants, that's what the friend wants. You can't get involved in that. And is that slut shaming? She she slept with all of them. That's not yeah. That's not shaming. That's Except what she friend number to do. one, allegedly. Yeah. Oh, I mean, if that's as long as it was it was consensual, that's what she wanted to do. Nothing you could do about that. Nope. But should she have spoken up when friend number three was saying, "Oh, we should take turns with her"? Why? That is that's slut shaming. Well, she's made herself be for everybody. In that group. Whoa. In that group? She's that's very, one, that's two, three. very charged language. And She's you been used, one, two, three. You used that language on purpose for everybody. I said everybody in the group. I mean, it's, that's factual. Right. But it's still charged. Oh, well. I, I, I don't think. I mean, you said it already, Poster. You said, I let grown folks be grown. That's right. As I get older, I would argue 19 and 20 is definitely not grown. But, but I understand what you mean. And that was her choice. Uh, yeah. As long as it's consensual. Should you have spoken up? I like to protect my peace and not jump into shit that don't got nothing to do with me. But then You're at right. the same time, monsters live in the dark. And if we never say anything, monsters grow. But when we shine a light on these issues, we find out that these monsters are very, very small people. Are these guys monsters? I don't know. Is she doing the things they're talking about? Yes. Should you have spoken up to protect someone that's not even accountable to you as a friend? I, I don't I don't think you're wrong if you do. I don't think you're wrong if you don't. Yeah. And I think if you, if you made the decision not to, that is okay. You're, I don't think you should have any regrets for that. <laughs> no. But let's keep it moving. Let's Same keep. poster. Okay. Story number three. I like this. I like this the same person. Am I the owl? Oh, God. Um, by the title of this next one, and again, this is this is no negative judgment. There's some judgment, but no negative judgment. You could probably like fuel our entire like episodes. Because <laughs> what? I just want to say Oh no. At can a you, certain just point, it? at a certain point. Is it everybody else? Okay, you can talk about it after you say it. Come on. Am I the asshole for outing this girl's STD status after she tried to slut shame me? Mm. I, 26-year-old female, briefly dated a 26-year-old male in 2019. He told me early on that he had a crazy baby mama and that he was just getting out of that relationship earlier that year. Usually, when men tell me their partner is crazy, I think, what the F did you do to make them that way? Okay. So the alarm bells were ringing and I just decided to ignore them. 
He really was such a sweet guy, and we instantly connected mentally and physically. After a few months of dating, I had a fellowship program that required a two-week trip to California. During that time, it was hard for us to keep in contact because of the time difference and the 8 to 7 schedule they had us on. When I get back, I was looking for him, and he's nowhere to be found. Oh. After okay. a few rounds of texts, I get a message from him that says, send me a picture, which I thought was weird because he already knew what I looked like. And uh -oh. I immediately think, hmm, nope. this is giving crazy baby mama energy. Yep. I was right, but at the time, didn't know. I tell him to follow me on socials if he wants to see my face that badly or meet up in person. A page did follow me, and then life kind of kept going. We never met up again, and the page would just randomly watch my stories. A few months ago by, and I get a message from him, and he's so sorry because that was, in fact, his crazy baby mama messaging me, pretending to be him. He asked relentlessly if we could meet up and talk, and I finally obliged. During the conversation, he told me that he had briefly gotten back with his crazy baby mama to try and make his family work, wow. and that I needed to understand. I don't play those games because nope. I'm childless and don't have to understand anything like that. Plus, something was telling me to leave him alone. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. A year later, in 2020, at the height of the pandemic, I get a text message from a random number that says, you know, James, to which I reply, I think you have the wrong number. They ask me if I'm this person and use my name and tells me it's the crazy baby mama of the guy I had dated briefly last year. I was confused on why she was texting me because we hadn't spoken in a year. But then she says I should get checked for herpes because <gasps> they are both experiencing an outbreak. Oh, no. I wasn't worried about this because I had just had an annual and was clean and had not had relations with him or anyone due to the pandemic since 2019. Mm -hmm. I tell her this and she apologizes and tells me she's just so tired of him lying. I tell her she deserves better and sends her some resources on homeopathic treatments for herpes. She thanks me and the conversation ends. A few months later, it's 2021. I post a selfie on social media and the caption reads, guess what I am? I get a reply from a page that says a whore who has sex in parking garages, oh. which was in fact true. But after examination, I realize it's the crazy baby mama oh, again. No. I decide to screenshot the message and the text messages about herpes and share it to my story and tag both of them with the caption. I know a bitch with shit on her lips isn't saying something to me about what I'm doing. Oh. I'm extremely sex positive and don't <laughs> mind outing myself, but normally would never put someone else's status. People know this and told me I was cold and anti-feminist. Oh, wow. And I just feel like I was just keeping it real. Oh. And don't care. So am I the asshole? <laughs> yes, but no. <laughs> yes, but no. <laughs> oh, boy. What a doozy. What so, a doozy. One, your writing and your storytelling is giving Risa Tisa. You are a very yeah, good story. That's very like good. you you frame your stories well. Yep. Very so well. maybe you need to I don't know what you do. You might want to pursue some writing because these stories are engaging. Yes. I'm, I'm reading it. I'm like, what? No. Huh? <laughs> no. What? <laughs> Let me hear your part again. Yeah. 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 A couple of things that you touched on that I think are lovely. You are childless and you don't have to get used to that. Thank you. Thank for standing you. Up for yourself. I understand the importance of being a girl's girl in today's world. I understand that. But sometimes people are just being a bitch. Yeah. And what are you supposed to do? Protect yep. her? Mm -hmm. Did you have to put out her status? No, you had to do all that. But as we always tell people, you can't tell someone how to feel. You were triggered. And you reacted. Maybe... You should have thought about it more, but you didn't. And I honestly don't blame you for that. Um, just to take it a step further, you are not her medical professional. You have no, there's no reasonable expectation of privacy. You tell me something, there's a reasonable expectation of privacy. Yep. You tell, she told you, she didn't have to tell you that. Yep. Yeah. And friends. you, you did, you, <laughs> obviously you were never friends. Yeah. That's the healthy answer. I agree with you. Um, Can we get to the not so healthy answer? Yes. Eh, that... I'm, I'm, I'm about to use some language. All right. Hey, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Yeah. She fucked around, literally. And found out. Literally. Yeah. And found out. Yeah, she found out. In all honesty, though, does she, does she write to her in the 
the DMs or she wrote to her in a text? Well, she had the text from before uh-huh. ask, telling her about the herpes. Uh-huh. And then later on, out of the blue, uh-huh. she just, the, the ex jumps back to call her a whore. Right. But I mean, but both of the, the herpes and uh, whatever, the, the tech, they were both texts though. People don't have to know who it was. No. Yeah. I mean. So. So me, that's not really outing her. Don't, yeah. th- don't throw stones when you live in a glass house. I am. Yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you the asshole? You could have handled it better. But I don't fault you for how you handle it. And I, I just want to touch on a few things. Sometimes when they go low, you got to take it to the flow. Yep. I agree with that. Sometimes petty. You have to be petty. I'm going to tell you right now. Yeah. I know a bitch with shit on her lips isn't saying something to me. That should be a t-shirt. She's a bad human. She is. She is. And you're reacting. And you're human at the end of the day and have feelings too. And final story from the same person. Am I the asshole for telling my friend that she would never amount to anything? Whoa. Wow. It's harsh. I am 18-year-old female, and my friend have been friends just during our senior year. Okay. We never met until I started taking electives during my senior year because I spent most of my high school taking honors and AP classes. She did not, which was no big deal to me. I was just happy to be in classes where I was no longer one of three black kids. Shout out, only black kids in the class. Woo-hoo! Know the feeling. Our first semester, we started being friends. There was some drama between us because a guy she had liked started talking to me. I didn't know until after that she even liked him, but she told me it was fine and that I was lucky because he was so popular. I don't care about stuff like that, and I ended up dumping him because of some high school BS. The next semester, I met and started dating with someone, and we're still together now. My friend was very upset about this because she felt like I knew she liked him, and again, I set my sights on taking him from her. I didn't know she liked him either, but she commended me again on having the juice because she was also very popular. Or he was also very popular. Shortly after this, I graduated high school and was preparing to go to school at an HBCU, which I knew would be a culture shock because of how white my upbringing had been. My friend knew that, too. She had not gotten into college and actually failed her senior year and had to repeat. Oh, I know that things happened and that she was dealing with a lot at home. So I decided to show her a different world and bring her along to my college orientation. She basically spent the whole trip being weird and mean to me, which culminated in her saying that once I go to school here, I wouldn't be special anymore like how I was at our school. Oh. As I mentioned, our school is very white, and I was the only girl that had locks. But I don't think they made me special, but she kept saying I would be average here, so get used to it now. I was so offended by her saying this and snapped at her that she should worry about graduating high school instead of me because she would never amount to anything if she didn't. Ooh. She hasn't spoken to me since. And honestly, I'm fine with that. Am I the asshole? Oh. Who? I can say I can relate, right? I thought it was a little harsh to say they weren't going to make, they weren't going to become anything in life because of the situation. I mean, although it, it might may have been true. To be fair, she said, you're not going to amount to anything if you don't finish high school. Yeah, that is true. I just don't know. I would have said that to. to the Here's man. the real way to know if you're the asshole. What is that person doing now? Yeah. The fact that you're asking if you're the asshole, though, makes me think, you know, there was a little bit of unnecessary. Like, you didn't have to say that. And you're feeling some kind of way. You definitely didn't have to say that. But so again, that's that's but what, again, that's the reason why I would. She's 18. Up. Right. You grow, you learn, but I don't, I, I, I wouldn't call you an asshole, but I would say you were in that learning stage of how not to be an asshole. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm going to say there's a little theme in all your stories. Oh, you attract a lot of drama. <laughs> well, if you attract a lot of drama. You must have a little bit in you too. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. Anything you'd like to say to close it up? No, I really love the stories. I like that they're personal. There's like people who are actually listening to what we have to say and then thinking about their lives and injecting that part. So I really appreciate the engagement. And I look forward to many more. I agree with my lovely, often correct, not always correct wife. Um, 
I do feel all over the place. What you guys won't see is the camera stopped like three times. So like it's a little jumbled. That might be why it seems like the energy <laughs> going up. I'll probably cut this part out too anyway. Um, I love that we got letters. I love that we did an entire episode. I thought this was going to take us years. We did an entire episode with the classmates, user, reader, listener submissions. And for that, you guys don't know how much it means. Like, this is all I wanted to do is respond to real people. We'll still be reading Reddit stories, even with, we'll probably mix it in. But I love this. This this thing we're creating here, whatever it is. Catch you next time. Catch you next time.